Hello, welcome. I recently posted uh, some of these pictures on social media and people really seemed to like the result and um, asked for tutorials. As you can see, or maybe tell, these are inspired by the new Windows 11 desktop wallpaper. Um, I also posted this A or B uh, on right here on YouTube on the community page and I ask you, do you like A better or B? And if you haven't answered yet, maybe just please take a second now, pause the video, um, look at the picture and answer now A or B just based on the looks before you get to know how these two different versions were made. All right, thank you. Now let's jump into Blender and take care of version A. Here I am in Blender. This is a version 3, which is in alpha at the moment. And this is also the version with Cycles X for faster cycles rendering. Um, this is my startup file and I'm just gonna get rid of the stage and the shader ball so we have a mostly naked scene here to start with. So this is the first version that I showed you before, version A. And this is done with displacements. Um, so first off, we're gonna start with some real mesh and I'm gonna take a round cube. A round cube is basically a sphere made out of squares. Uh, and if you don't have this option available in your Blender menu here, um, you just enable the extra objects. Uh, it's an add-on that comes with Blender, it's just not enabled by default. And then you have round cube. And that gives you this when you add the round cube, which just looks like a cube. But you can set the radius to one and now you have a sphere made out of squares, which is really awesome. Cool, now we'll go into edit mode. Right click subdivide just once and set the smoothness to one. Okay. So we're gonna subdivide this a lot more using um, the, the modifier, but this is a good uh, base to start off. So now how do displacements work? Well, it's all done in shaders. So let's go to the shader editor. I'm already in here. Um, we're gonna add a new material. Let's call this Windows 11, why not? Because I mean, that's what this whole thing is inspired by, right? So this Windows 11 material, we don't care about the actual shader for now, we just care about the displacement. So we're gonna plug something in here. Now, what do we need? We need something that looks like, like those folded sheets of paper, whatever, whatever it is, right? So we need a wave texture. Let me show you. A wave texture, just makes, where is it, b -b 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 wave texture. If we hit, you know what, I'm gonna enable screencast keys quick. So if we watch or if we look at what the wave texture looks like here in the rendered view, we get these lines. Uh, it's bands going along the X axis and that's what that looks like. So now if you think of a height map and white is really high and black is really low, we can use these bands to create those, whatever you call them. <laughs> um, but, or, well, let me show you before we continue. So if we take this shader and we plug this into the displacement for which we need a vector displacement node, right? So the color, or we can even take the factor, goes into the height. This goes into the displacement. And then we don't see anything yet because we have to go over here on the materials tab. Uh, we have to go down. And here where it says displacement bump only, we actually set this to displacement only. And then it looks like this, which also looks kind of cool. But um, you can see that now we are using the shader node to create displacement. We're displacing the vertices. This object doesn't have many vertices yet, but we can fix that. We can add a subdivision surface modifier, set it to maybe something like three for the viewport, but something really high, five or maybe maybe six for the render, right? Maybe four for the viewport. I hope this doesn't slow down too much. And now you can see that the black and white bands that we have here from the wave texture are actually displacing our geometry. Black is going in really far in uh, and white is gonna stick out. The mid level here is set to 0.5. That's why black goes in, white goes out. Okay, so this is that. But now let's unplug this real quick and look at this. Um, now we need to distort this. And this is actually really easy. Let me get rid of this quick. 
um, you can see this vector input here. And that is basically the coordinate system for this uh, texture node. This is a three-dimensional texture. If you think of it, there's black and white in 3D space all over. Um, and this would be the input coordinate system that you can plug in. And it's always like all the shader nodes in Blender have some sort of vector input. And we can really mess up its coordinate system by plugging in another texture. So we can take a noise texture. And here we have a color. Color is RGB, red, green, blue. And the vector is XYZ. And the cool thing in Blender is you can mix colors and vectors. So we can plug the color into the vector and you can see we get really distorted bands now. So we're distorting the band texture. Now, of course we have scale here, so we can play with that. We want to turn detail off. So we get very nice wavy pattern here. We also want to turn roughness off and distortion is already at zero. So this looks nice and then we can play with the scale and this is it. And if we plug that into our displacement, we get this, which already looks like something. So um, how do we do this? Let me just get a, I don't know, quick diffuse shader, plug that in here. So we have some sort of material going on. Okay, so this already kind of looks like what we saw, right? Except that it still looks like the outer, the outer edges are still a perfect sphere. That doesn't look very good. So we need to distort some more. Um, we're gonna take another noise texture. So Shift A texture, blah, 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 noise texture. And we're gonna add it to this factor here. Um, so we're going to need a converter math, which is going to add together this value and this value. And now you can see we're, we're not only displacing on the sphere, we're also displacing the sphere. Basically, we're putting a noise texture onto the whole object, right? So again, here we can play with the scale, maybe turn it down and also maybe turn down the detail with the roughness i don't know you know this is this is all trial and error but i can see that this is not enough uh, of a displacement from this guy here so we need another converter math node multiply this by something like three now it's really big so there's two things we can do we can take the camera and move back or let me escape this or we simply turn down our scale here of the displacement node, 0.5 maybe, 0.3. Okay, so now we have this. Cool, this already looks cool. Here we can see those, those like those jagged edges here. It look like a, I don't know, a saw. <laughs> um, this is just due to the fact that we don't have enough geometry, right? So we have four uh, viewport levels for the displacement here in the viewport. We will have more for the render, which is cool. We can also use adaptive subdivisions, which is only available if you set the feature set over here to experimental. And then you can use adaptive subdivisions, which tells Blender to create more subdivisions where they're required and less subdivisions where they're not required because they're not visible. Um, when you do that, you get a dicing scale, which is set to one by default. And also you can play with the subdivision settings over here in the render properties uh, where you get the dicing scale for the render which is set to one pixel so it's very very detailed also needs a lot of time to render and a lot of memory and it's set to four pixels for the viewport but this looks nice now for the viewport let we will see what it looks like for the render we can play with these settings if for some reason the adaptive subdivisions doesn't work for you yesterday i played with this and it, it just didn't want to work the, the render was always completely different from the viewport i think this is just a bug i am always using the latest blender so this is three alpha like i said maybe this is just a bug um, and then for the final render i didn't even use the adaptive subdivisions i just used a lot of normal subdivisions and worked fine too so now this is done, right? So we have this cool object and we have all of these settings here. We can play with the scale. We can even, for example, go to this node, control T and we get a mapping node and then maybe even rotate um, the coordinate system. 
of the noise vector sum like this and then we get different patterns different styles uh, every time this re-renders okay so this is our displacement now the most important thing for this tutorial actually is the material <laughs> it's very simple material but it's very effective first of all let me just play with my lights a little so in my startup scene, I have always have the three point lighting. I have this key light, I have this rim light and think I'm just gonna go here and switch that off completely. Then I have this fill light back here. I'm just gonna make that one white. And my key light here, I will place a little differently, maybe more like here. Um, when you look at the Windows 11 wallpaper, there you can play with the lights you can try and figure out where the shadows are and like how big the light source might be and stuff like that i'm just gonna make this a uh, really big round light like this shining like this right so we get some nice shadows and some nice highlights now let's go back to this guy and play with the material we don't want diffuse we we're gonna delete diffuse we're gonna take a shader and this is actually a subsurface scattering shader. It's very, very simple. Only one thing left to do to make it really look cool. First of all, we want this to be blue. So let's make it blue, just like in the Windows image. Then you might be thinking, well, the subsurface here looks kind of weird. It, it gets this like pinkish tone to it. And that is because of the radius. This is set to 1.2.1. By default and what you want is one one and one this is basically red green blue and the default setting is for skin so we don't want that we just want radius one 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 and then you get this and this is already pretty cool looking um, because with the subsurface scattering the light goes into the material gets scattered around inside the material and comes out like maybe on the the opposite side or something like that so that you get these these uh, highlights right all the thin parts of our geometry here are now basically the color of the light which is white and that's very cool if this is a bit too much like right here it's a lot right you can to use this scale value and do something like 0.2 let's see what that looks like also switch this to random walk I almost forgot random walk just looks a little bit better I find it has a little bit more contrast in, in exactly those areas. So it looks like this, maybe 0.3 is cool. Let's see, what do we have for the light here? Uh, 30 watts, so turn up the key light here. And I also have this light in the back here. Maybe put this like over here, right? So now let's see what we can do with the camera. Camera is over here. Let's look at it from the side. I have uh, this track two here in my startup file. I have this set up. I have the camera, I have a focus point, which we can set, but now we don't know where to focus because our real object here doesn't look like this. Um, so we, all we have to do is set this to rendered view. And then we can see what the object looks like. And then we can take the focus point, put it somewhere like in here. And this looks pretty good. Cool. Then, of course, we want this to be a desktop wallpaper. So we go here and set it to 1080p. So we get, no, wrong one, 1080p. So we get the full HD version. If you want a 4K version, just set this to 200%. So now we have this. Well, this already looks really nice. So, Let's see what it looks like in rendered view. Okay, this takes a second, tessellating round cube. Of course, we have a lot of geometry now. This might take a while. It also takes a lot of uh, memory. And when it's done, it should start rendering. Right, so now, doing something. Now it's computing the displacement, which is a single threaded process. And I have 64 threads on my Threadripper, but it just takes a while. <laughs> okay. 
So now you can see that this is very detailed here with the, the adaptive subdivision set to one pixel for the rendered view. And now it's rendering. All right, it's done. It took exactly two minutes. Uh, this is Cycles X, like I said. Um, and now it's rendered on transparent and then we have a white background. This is from the compositor. So now there's one thing that this material still needs and that is a little bit of uh, translucency, right? So transparency, translucency, you know what the difference is. We mix some translucency onto our subsurface scattering shader. So this would be 100% translucency, which is just a black and white image. Also looks pretty cool. And this with zero, which was, would get this input, which is the subsurface scattering input, but we just add like 0.2 translucency and that really makes this uh, material pop now like i said before i'm gonna go back to adaptive subdivisions and turn that off turn this to three so it looks horrible here in the viewport but the render it i think is going to be a lot faster and remember down here you can play with all of these values here like moving the coordinates around playing with the noise settings here to get different looks um, this is all up to you now. All right, that's it for variant A. Uh, it's all done with displacement, so it's all done with a single shader. It's very organic looking, it's very smooth and round. If you want sharper edges, you could put in a color ramp and then clamp the white and black down to not have that many grayscale values in between. You, I think you get the idea. Um, like I said, this is very organic looking. It doesn't look much like folded paper and the Windows 11 uh, desktop wallpaper I think looks more like folded paper like very interesting like real not so much organic or like underwater sea creature like but more like paper and in the next video uh, we're gonna check out how we can do that and how we can create this variant B so I hope I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching Chris P out